So let's do this problem. We have steel and wood and these are the dimensions. You can see all that. We have the ratio of the two Young's moduli is 30 and we're going to be given the M max on a moment diagram 10 kilonewton meters and the question is what is sigma max in the steel so in other words I don't want to know what's going on in the wood here I just want to know what's the stress maximum stress in the steel and I've been given it's 10 kilonewtons per meter 10, 10 kilonewton meters is the maximum moment so the solution of this problem is to first draw the transformed section quite simple to do that the width of the steel is 0.3 the ratio is 30 I just do 30 times 0.3 to get the width of our equivalent wood is 9 meters so I now can draw this this is my transform section all I do now is change the width of the flange and make it all wood so I now have an all wood beam now what I do is I'm now going to analyze this so I forget about this <laughs> um, until the very end of the problem so skip that you don't <laughs> we draw the transform section and now we use it we don't analyze that we don't work with that section so the um, what do I want to do so this is my transform section I need to get the centroid and the moment of inertia of this so I'm not going to go through it you can all do this you can pause the video we've done this over and over again so I'm going to let you review that and um, but in the main in the meantime we get our centroid location we get our moment of inertia and that's what we use so um, we want to get uh, we okay we have um, I didn't specify any compression or tension so I just want the maximum absolute value and um, so here is our centroid is there well where is the maximum tension or compression going to occur it's going to occur farthest away from the uh, centroid why because that gives us our maximum y so what I need to get is the you can all figure this out but um, given that that is 0.587 that is 0 0.65 0 0.65 minus 0.587 is 0 0.063 that is the distance between the point of interest and the centroid and it's above the centroid so it's positive so I, I'm filling this out my M is 10 and we have our negative sign there and our y is then positive 0.063 and we just got our i there it is we end up with negative 84.11 it's compression why because I gave you a positive moment a positive moment means you know that sort of behavior which means I have compression at the top so in the steel, I have 84.11 kilopascals in compression. Now that, sorry, that is at a location 
it's not in, where the steel is, but this, of course, is our all wood. Um, that is our all wood um, beam that we have created for analysis. Now, uh, so this is my answer for the all wood. That's the answer for the all wood cross section, but remember what we had before. So, um, how we, when we analyze this, and um, remember the um, you have to remember what the stress distribution looked like when we had two materials and that is that um, here it is uh, that's what I'm looking for when we have all wood our stress distribution looks like that so in other words this is my transform section and for instance here is my maximum stress but I don't want that stress. <laughs> Instead, what do I want? I want this stress over here. And it's easy to get that stress because um, to go from this stress to this stress, then all we have to do is multiply by the ratio, the 30 in this particular case, the ratio. Because that's what, that's what we had back in here. So, in other words, to go from the sigma wood to the sigma steel, I multiply by the ratio. So, um, in the end, what we need to do with, our, with this particular problem, then, is that we just need to multiply by um, the 30. So, my ES over UW is 30. I multiply that times this 84.11, I get negative 25.23. So that's my final answer. So we do the whole problem, all wood. At the very end, we have to put in the, um, the ratio of the, um, the ratio of the, uh, the stiffnesses. Now, okay. <laughs> In a way, I didn't draw this to scale. I should have drawn it to scale. It's a little bit of a silly beam cross section to make, to be honest with you. And it's sort of highlighted. I didn't. None of this is to scale. If I drew it to scale, this would look more like um, it look more something like that. And you know, <laughs> this doesn't do a whole lot for us here. So to have that little piece of wood there doesn't help a whole lot. It does a little bit, but not much. So. Um, a much better design, as we analyzed before, is to have the steel at both the top and the bottom so that we end up with more of an eye, an eye beam than it is to just have one at the top. Because, uh, you know, the, put it this way, when we have, when we go back to our, to the beam that we studied, the original one here, back in here, where I have the wood and I have steel and I have steel. Interestingly enough, when we draw that out, now, now it looks more like an eye. And what we see is the whole purpose of this wood here is to separate the steel, to push the steel away from the neutral axis, which gives it, gives our um, makes our moment of inertia, makes this moment of inertia greater, which gives the beam, uh, you know, the eye becomes bigger. When the eye becomes bigger, it's in the denominator. It low lowers our sigma. So it just makes our beam behave much better when I push the stiffer materials out farther. Now, what you also see when we look at our diagram of our stresses that we did before that looks like this, what do I see? Well, um, what I see is the big stresses are in the steel, which is what we want because the steel tolerates the stresses. So um, when we have composite materials, what we're doing, well, the stresses are attracted to the stiffer materials. So 
what you find is that when you're building something with mixed materials, the softer materials don't attract those stresses. The stiffer materials get the, get the stiffer stresses. And similarly, if you put, to, put things together, a lot of different types of members together, what you'll find is that the stiffer members take the stresses. So, so in other words, if you build a bicycle out of a lot of different materials, the stiff materials will, will take the stresses, not the, um, not the softer ones. So um, anyway, that's a bit of a lesson in, in composite what happens when you put together composite materials. They have different properties, and um, these properties will result in um, different behaviors in your structure, and it's, it ends up being important. So, uh, like I say, if we have um, the wood, so the softer materials, generally we use them as like spacers and moving things around uh, so that the... Um, the stiffer materials take the stresses. As I said before, when we make an I-beam, we use it like this, and we don't use the H type thing, typically. Um, now, what, what happens if I have three materials, for instance? Well, say I have steel, wood, and a plastic, something like that, where the plastic is, um, where the ratio for the steel to the wood is 30, for the plastic, to the wood it's 15 well then what do, how do we handle that well we have our wood piece here and it's 15 X for the plastic 30 X for the steel so that's how we can handle more than one material more than two materials rather all right so I want you to do this one so, you know, draw the shear and bending moment diagram, draw the transform section, again, find the sigma max in the steel. So pause, find Y bar and I, pause the video here and do this particular problem. Okay, assuming that you've done it, shear and bending moment diagrams are easy. There's the shear, there's the moment. And um, there's my maximum moment. I need to, you need to find the point of interest. I didn't say where the point of interest is going to be. So what do I do? I find it there because there's where my maximum moment is going to be. I draw the transform section. I've got my ratio, in this case, 30. Again, so I take the width, 0.4. I multiply by 30. I get 12 feet. So this is my all wood cross section. I now work with this to get my Y bar and my centroid. So my, cent my Y bar and my moment of inertia, I'm not going to go through it, but you can see, pause the video and get all the, do all the calculations here. I get my eye, it looks like that. And then what do I do? I have to, so first of all, I have to pay attention to where's the steel. The steel's at the bottom now. I don't want the stress up at the top. I want the stress at the bottom because that's where the steel is. So my point of interest is going to, going to be here on our cross section. It's going to be here along the length of the beam. And um, what I need to get is my Y. It's and you can do that geometrically. It's negative 0.112. It's negative because it's below the centroid. So I get my minus my over i. So it's minus 50. I was getting uh, 50 is here. And um, the y we figured out it's below there. So it's negative 0.112. And then the i we got is here. And then. This, of course, is <clears throat> the all wood, but I want the steel, so I have to multiply it by the E steel over E wood ratio. And there is my 
maximum stress. And then it's going to be what? Is it tension or compression? Well, it's, first of all, if I did everything right, I got a negative, a negative there, so I end up with a positive there. And in addition, what? It's This is positive bending. Positive bending is like that, which means I have tension at the bottom, and at the bottom there's tension. So tension is positive. So uh, it makes sense, and we can confirm that we had the right uh, signs and carried them through properly. All right, I'm going to stop there.